Okay, now that we have the verified opt-in taken care of, uh, let's go ahead and let's set up our very first uh, autoresponder message. And to do that, we're going to, first of all, check to make sure that we are working with the correct list, and we are. And then we're going to go over here to Messages, and we're going to select Follow-up Message. Now, notice right beside it is Broadcast. So you have two different types of messages here. I'm going to cover blog broadcast in a uh, later video. But these are the two most common. And let me tell you the, the difference between these two real quickly. Broadcast basically is just like the name implies. You will be sending an email out to every one of your subscribers all at the same time. Now, the follow-up is different. The follow-up is going to be a series of messages that's going to be sent out over an interval and that interval is based upon when that subscriber uh, has opted into your list. So you may have some subscribers who are on uh, message number two in your autoresponder series. You may have subscribers who are on message number 10. Uh, and so different subscribers are going to be at different uh, timelines, uh, points in your timeline along your autoresponder series. Whereas broadcast, it gets sent out to everybody at once. So I hope you understand that difference there. So we're going to start off with uh, follow-up and we're going to add our very first uh, follow-up message and it's going to be very important that you add at least one message to your autoresponder series and I'm going to explain why here in a little bit. But let's go ahead down here to uh, add message and we see that this is message number one and it's going to be sent immediately on our next messages there will actually be a box here where we can select on how many days from the past message do we want to send it do we want to send it the very next day seven days later you're gonna to get to choose that number but for message number one it is sent immediately so as soon as a person has confirmed their subscription BAM they are emailed this message here so this is a good message to put in uh, just kinda of like a welcome message uh, thank you for joining my list uh, here is the URL to the bonuses I promised you. Now you have here click tracking. You can enable the tracking of clicks on links in your messages. So if you want to be able to track that, you can check that off. I almost always have that on. Uh, I like to be able to see what people are clicking on and what, um, what, which ones are doing well, which ones aren't, so I can always be tweaking things. And then a lot of these different templates here are going to be if you're doing HTML templates. I'll be honest, I don't do HTML templates. And I do not subscribe to any lists that, also, that, that even use HTML templates. But uh, so uh, I want to let you know right now ahead of time that uh, I'm a plain template kind of guy. I stick with that one and the majority of marketers uh, do that also. So I'm going to select the basic template there. Here, of course, we have our personalization fields. Anywhere that we want, we can insert uh, information that we have collected about the different uh, uh, about the subscriber that the subscriber has given to us. Like, for example, their name, name fix. Base the word fix in these simply means that it's going to try to force a capital where it believes is the uh, the beginning of the first name or the beginning of the last name. Uh, just first name, first name fix, and it's got all kinds of different options and such. You will find uh, in your uh, bonuses along with this, there is a description of all of these personalizations uh, uh, so that you can make a quick reference to them and what they are. So anytime you want to insert somebody's name, you can simply just choose, for example, first name fix, and it will show up here in the subject heading since that's where I was clicking at. You can put in your subject there, of course. There we go. Bill, welcome to my list, or whatever their name happens to be. Here, of course, we have our plain text message, and here we're going to just type away. You're going to fill in uh, whatever it is that your message is. Now typically what I do is I like to type mine in a word processor so I can do spell check and etc like that on it and then I just cut and paste it right into this. You will notice that Aweber has a recommended width 
for your email which is right here and if you are typing along or if you cut and paste from uh, a document and you go past it no biggie because if you click here on wrap long lines it will automatically adjust it so that you are within the recommended width so that's a very handy feature that uh, is there that you can use if you are using an HTML message instead here you go there's your template right there that you can start working with a little tiny uh, WYSIWYG editor that's in there down here is your can spam compliance it has your uh, mailing address in there that is uh, required you have to have that in there that's going to appear at the bottom of all of your messages that you send out you can then also have it analyze save and then it's going to check it against the spam assassin score I'm going to show you that in a little bit and if you have any attachments to it uh, you can add those attachments here I've never done attachments uh, I just think it is probably too much of a possibility of it flagging the different spam filters and so for that I don't bother uh, sending an attachment uh, to it I would much rather uh, instead monetize it better by having them have to come back to my website to download an item instead of me uh, emailing it to them automatically so there is that first message there that we're going to fill in and then when it is all finished of course we are going to simply tell it save now there's something very important that I need to um, bring up here and that is the importance of having at least one message here in your follow-up message series here in your autoresponder and the reason why is this notice that this is like I said earlier message number one if you send out a broadcast message meaning it goes to everybody all at the same time and you don't have a message here it will automatically put all of your subscribers on message number 1001 alright so why does that happen well what happens is this if you don't have any messages here and then you send out a broadcast Aweber assumes that this is just going to be a broadcast list that you're not going to have any type of autoresponder so by setting it at 1001 for the message number it means that none of your subscribers are going to get any email or any autoresponder message from you unless that message starts with the number 1002 or higher okay I hope you follow that it's a real pain because if you decide later on that you want to have a follow-up series then you have to start all of your messages at 1002 or you have to go into every single subscriber and change what message that they're on that'll be in a later video so it is much easier to go ahead and have at least one message here in your follow-up messages so that that doesn't happen I hope I haven't confused you too terribly much because it certainly confused me when I was having to go through and uh, change numbers on four or five hundred different subscribers on a list that I accidentally uh, did that with okay then let's go on to the next video